Praise be to God. Hallelujah. God is angry with the wicked every day. God hates hands that shed innocent blood, Planned Parenthood, and all that support it. God will judge you. You're under the wrath and judgment of God, and I've come here to give you the message, the warning to repent of your wicked sins. The time is nigh, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You have no right to kill what God created. The heartbeat bill is not the standard, the standard is life. Life begins at conception. When God has created, let no man destroy. By the shedding of innocent blood, you reap. You are going to heap God's wrath on yourself. God is angry at this nation that sheds innocent blood, the blood of the innocent, innocent babies in the womb. And no murderer will inherit the kingdom of God. No murderer will inherit the kingdom of God and abortion, killing a baby is murder. No murderer will inherit the kingdom of God. You will be standing under the judgment of God when he judges you. What will be your excuse on that day when you're standing before God? Where will the Supreme Court, where will Joe Biden be, where will all these corrupt politicians be making money off the blood of the innocent the billions upon billions of dollars the sacrifice of the innocent blood you're sacrificing to your bales your mollocks this is not health care murdering babies is not health care i'm glad your parents did not abort you give thanks to god that your parents did not kill you in the womb they gave you the chance to life, but when you kill a baby in the womb, you have wiped out generations upon generations of children. God says, be careful you not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, their angels see the face of God himself. The angels of God, mighty angels, one angel destroyed over 80,000 people when Israel rebelled. God restrained, God relented the hand of that angel. That's one angel. That is nothing compared to the absolute power of my Lord Jesus Christ. He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. And he is angry with this nation. This nation has blood on its hands, the blood of the innocent, innocent life. Let the babies live. Mothers, God gave you a womb as the bearers of life to hold that baby, that treasure, that beautiful life in your womb to guard and protect it. Men, men that support killing babies are going to be just as guilty and all health care, so-called workers of iniquity. It's not health care when you murder innocent baby if you killed someone if you murdered someone under the laws of men you would stand before a judge a man judge can you imagine standing before the judge of judges god himself god almighty he is the same lord yesterday today and forever he is the same god that destroys he is the life giver and the life taker you oh man oh who are you who are you, O oh man, to tell God what to do? This is a warning that you repent and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ. If you're in there now, I pray for you. I pray for you that you come out of there. There are options to killing your babies. Your mama didn't kill you. It might have been inconvenient. It might not have been planned, but planned murder is premeditated murder. It is first degree murder. Yeah, at least in this state, there is still capital punishment. God wants that none should perish. He doesn't want you to have the blood of the innocent on your hands. And even my God, yes, my God can forgive you of this wickedness. 
My God can forgive you of this wickedness of murder of the innocent. But you got to be humble. You got to come to him, cry out to him and ask for him to forgive you. If you have this blood on your hands, you've given in. Or maybe it wasn't something that you put on yourself. See, most pregnancies are not involuntary. A very tiny percentage of pregnancies were due to unconsensual intercourse. And that still isn't an excuse. Rape is never an excuse for murder. Rape is never going to be an excuse to murder that life that had nothing to do with the wickedness of the father. The crime the father committed should not rest. The penalty should not rest on the child that had nothing to do with that wickedness. My prayer to you is that you would be pricked in your heart as to the wickedness and evil of abortion as you get your nails done, your mani pedis right next door, as you meditate to your false gods and your yoga and Pilates at the other door. Women, so many women here. Do you think God will be mocked? Do not be deceived, beloved. God will not be mocked for whatever a man sows that he shall be the unborn in the womb. You're sowing in the flesh and from the flesh you kingdom of heaven. You must be born again to enter into the kingdom of heaven. But if you cut off that life, you cut off that little life, that innocent born of the spirit of God. Uh, innocent babies. Babies are innocent. Babies are innocent. When they're murdered, they're gonna, immediately they're taken into the kingdom of God. God takes him back. He is a just God. He's a God of justice and mercy. Even so, his mercy is greater than his judgment. His judgments are pure. The judgments of God are holy and pure. They are life. But you don't fear God. This nation doesn't fear God. That's why this nation thinks and is adultering. This adulterous, this perverse and wicked generation is playing with fire. And you will be cast into the eternal fire because of it. Fear the Lord is life when you fear god you have the beginnings of knowledge when you fear god you have the beginnings of understanding and wisdom uh, but my people perish for lack of knowledge because you reject the knowledge of god god will reject you yes he will reject you on that day see it is appointed for man to die once and then comes the judgment of god we are all going to die once and then we're going to stand judge and judgment are you going to be at the mercy seat is christ jesus going to be there interceding as your mediator for there is only one mediator between God and man the man Jesus Christ he came down and he shed his precious blood for you that you would no longer be a child of the devil a wicked sinner but you would be reconciled to him God bless you Jesus is number one I agree he is number one God bless you I use my index finger to express that but you can use your middle finger I accept that Jesus Christ is number one Praise the Lord. But you don't have to be a wicked child of the devil here celebrating and supporting baby murder. And that's the problem. Men, where are the men of God? Where are you? Your little boys. Your little boys playing with your pee-pee. That's why you're keeping your mouth silent. Uh, that devil's got you in your hearts with your sins, with your beer drinking, your fornication. Men, you need to be men. Men of God. Not little boys still looking at pornography and being overly obsessed with one member of their body. That's where the devil gets you, man. That's where the devil gets you, man. And then you feel like, oh, who am I to judge? I'm just a wicked, filthy sinner. That's where the, the devil gets a man. See, if you bind the strong man, you can rob the house. And man, you're supposed to be the protectors. You're supposed to be the protectors of life, providers of life. You're supposed to protect innocent blood. The baby. You see, man, you have a part in this. See, the, the woman didn't spontaneously bring a baby into existence. There is a man involved. There is a man involved. Whatever the circumstances were, if you gave into lust, you gave into lust and you slapped around and, and then you're gone. You have no responsibilities. Guess what? Guess what? That sin is still on you, man, of fornication. And no fornicator, no fornicator will inherit the kingdom of heaven. There will be no fornicator in the kingdom of heaven. Fornication is sex outside of marriage when you put the cart before the horse, when you are just busy being a whoremonger. You're seeking these loose women, these harlots, to satisfy your precious carnal desires. No, you're not going to be arrogant on that day.
You're not going to be honking your horn at Jesus on that day. You're not going to be flipping the finger to God on that day. No, you're going to be begging for mercy. And there will be no mercy for you on that day. It will be too late for you. It will be too late for you on that day. That's why today, if you still hear, if you still hear, still hear the still small voice of God, do not turn a deaf ear. Oh, you stiff-necked and rebellious people. Has not the gospel been preached to you? Where are the pastors? Where are the true shepherds? Uh, this, this country has no very few shepherds of the Lord. There are still a remnant, but there are very few shepherds. They're hired hirelings, hirelings in these false churches, these effeminate men, skinny jean wearing, frosted flake men, selling you a different gospel, which is no gospel at all. They're selling you doctrines of devils, telling you your best life now, selling you prosperity, saying peace, peace. Peace, peace, and then sudden destruction will come upon them. Do you not know that the, my Lord is going to return one more time? Not as a suffering servant. He's not going to return and, and crucify himself again. See, he crucified himself once and for all on that cross. He said it is finished. He fulfilled the prophets before. That spoke about him since the times of Moses. Hallelujah. And he fulfilled the law given to Moses. He is the great I am. He is the Holy One of Israel. God the Father has put the power of judgment into the hands of the Son. Do you not know? Have you not heard Jesus Christ? He has the hands. He has the keys over hell and death in his hands. He defeated the last enemy, death. O oh, grave, where is your sting? Death cannot separate us from the love of Christ. But do you love him? Jesus Christ said, if you loved me, you would obey my commandments. Are you obeying the commandments of God when you kill innocent life that he created? What will you tell Jesus when you have to give an account? For we will all have to give an account for every reckless word spoken. What will you say to Jesus on that day? I didn't believe in you, Jesus. You're going to believe on that day. Every knee will bow. Every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord at the mention of his name. Every knee in heaven Every knee on earth and under the earth shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. What will you tell him on that day? What will be your excuse, O man, O woman, before a holy God, naked and ashamed? No one will be there to defend you. The good news is that you can get right with God now, even now you can repent. You don't have to go forward with killing your babies and the death pill. The chemical abortions. You don't think God sees the chemical abortions that you're trying to seek as an alternative? The pill, killing life, still killing life in the womb, flushing it down the toilet as if it was fecal matter. Do you know you're going to be flushed down the toilet? God is going to flush you down the toilet into hell. God is going to flush you down the toilet into hell because you deserve, you deserve it. If you killed a child, innocent life, and you haven't repented, you're still in your wicked ways, you think it's okay, you're celebrating it, you know it's not right. You know it's not right to have abortions. It wasn't right to have that one night stand or that unplanned encounter of intercourse with the man that wasn't your husband. It wasn't right. And now the consequences, you're bearing the consequences of it, and you're seeking to cover it up out of convenience. They make it too easy. The devil will make it very convenient and easy to sin. He's like a drug dealer. Your addiction is sin and he'll see selling it for you in your flesh. In their flesh. The good news is you don't have to be stuck in your flesh. You can be convicted. You can decide this day. Today is the day of salvation. You can choose this day to serve the Lord Jesus Christ instead of your, your flesh sin nature. You can choose this day not to be a child of the devil as I once was. As I once was. And you can choose to be a child of God. You can cry out to God and ask that he might forgive you of your sins. You can believe on the Son, Jesus Christ, whom he sent as a propitiation, a payment, an eternal atonement, that our souls might be reconciled to eternal life with God the Father in the kingdom of heaven through his only beloved Son, his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. See, God so loved this world. That's past tense. He loved the holy, perfect world he made. God loved the holy, perfect world he made. 
In his image he made them male and female, Adam and Eve. Uh, but sin entered this world, but grace all the more. See, Jesus Christ, he is the perfect image of God the Father, full of grace and truth. He is the word that was in the beginning with God and is God. Jesus Christ said the Father and the Son are one. He can do nothing apart from the Father. Jesus Christ said he is the way. He is the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through the Son. There's no other way. Some have tried. Many will try, but you know, not everyone that calls him Lord will be in the kingdom of heaven. But those who do the will of God. Murdering babies is not the will of God. Fornicating and having unplanned pregnancies was not the will of God. When you pray to God, you seek his will in his holy Bible, his King James Bible, if you read English. And you're seeking the will of God, see, so you have to be born again, a new spirit. But first, you must come to faith, for it is impossible to please God without faith. And faith without works is dead. Astral rags before a holy God. But when you're a new creation, you are his workmanship created by Christ Jesus himself, that you should walk in them, his holy works, doing the will of God and finishing his works here on earth, sharing the good news. Plant Parenthood, you need to repent of this wickedness, turning baby murder into a multi-billion dollar industry for pharmaceutical pro pro promoting pharmacia promoting sorcery promoting pharmacia using the dead cells of babies even for these false so-called vaccines you think God doesn't see the devices of wicked men and women but the idolatry and covetousness of riches uh, what will it gain you O oh, foolish man, what will it profit you to gain the whole world but lose your soul in hell? What will a man recompense? What will you pay in exchange for your soul? You've turned this into idolatry, this lifestyle in America of wealth and prosperity. Do you not realize that you are poor, naked, and one breath away from being cast into hell? Repent today while you still can. Turn from your sins. Be pricked in your heart. Let your laughter be turned into mourning. Humble yourselves before the sight of God that he might exalt you up, lift you up on that day. You have to be humble. God gives grace to the humble. God can give grace if you're humble. A humble and contrite heart, my Lord, will not despise, but he is opposed to the proud. 